Do you know what it means that a president of a country or a government of a country, a ruling government, we intentionally lie to the citizens to convince them that the government is doing well? They keep on lying to Nigerians to make sure that Nigerians will think that, oh, these people are working or they are doing well. You know what that means? How can you accommodate a government that keeps telling lies upon lies to convince the citizens that they are doing well? Why can't they work for their actions to speak for them? This one year and some months history of Bola Metinumbu has demonstrated that Tinumbu is living on lies to make sure that some Nigerians who do not understand the handwriting on the wall to begin to open up for them. I want to take you back to the history of Bola Metinumbu's presidency right from May 29, 2023, when Tinumbu was, you know, doing the inaugural speech, he made a statement, subsidy is removed. Is that no provision is there for fresh subsidy. The fresh subsidy is gone. We all know the, uh, the, the consequences of that statement, inflation here and there, the masses begin to suffer. At the end, we discover that this administration did not remove the subsidy like Tinumbu declared on his inaugural uh, speech that subsidy is gone. We discover that they are paying billions upon billions, going to trillions for for subsidy. That is the first propaganda, the first lie that this administration paddled to make sure that people will say, yes, Tinumbu said something during campaign and now he's doing it. But he never did it. Tinumbu did not remove subsidy for one day. So why is it that the fuel is expensive and they are still paying for subsidy? Because they said that they have budgets for subsidy and the budgets they have used to pay subsidy, they also reveal it. So who is deceiving who? As if that is not enough. After the inaugural speech, the first international visit Tinumbu made was to United Arab Emirates. When he traveled to United Arab Emirates, his spokesperson uh, jury came to the national television to tell Nigerians that UAE has removed the visa restriction on Nigerians. And after 48 hours, that was 2023, after 48 hours, the United Arab Emirates released a statement that they did not have any deal with Tinumbu, that they did not remove the visa restriction on Tinumbu. That is the first red flag about this administration. Time without number, this government has bring a policy. They are bringing policies that are making, you know, so many giant companies to leave Nigeria to other African countries. At the time, Tinumbu also traveled to Saudi Arabia for one international economic con conference, something like that. And Tinumbu also lied to Nigerians that he secured a $600 million investment from a shipping company. Within 48 hours as well, the shipping company come out to debunk the news that we don't have any deal with Bola Metinumbu of Nigeria. We do not promise him that we are coming to Nigeria to invest $600 million and so on and so forth. This is so pathetic. An ordinary Nigeria will not understand the effect of what I'm saying. That the president of a country will continue to lie to the citizens for them to believe that he's working. Now, if it is in a country where people take the words of their president serious, because as far as I'm concerned, Nigerians are not taking Tinumbu serious. If Nigerians are taking Tinumbu serious, Tinumbu is supposed not to be there as a president for even lying to Nigerians and all. Now, there is something that also happened recently, that was about day before yesterday, where the federal government of Nigeria announced that they have also had an agreement with the United Arab Emirates that uh, they have removed the visa restriction on Nigeria, that Nigerians had to pay uh, the deposit of 600,000, I don't know, something like visa fee about 600 and something thousand, and the deposit of uh, 10 million naira, something like that. So when we receive the news people were happy okay i think it's a it's a better option since the night before now they have come after one year to correct their lies and uh, they were able to negotiate to remove the visa restriction unfortunately for them unfortunately to nigeria masses the united arab emirates still come out to the bank that the deposit and the visa fee that tinubu said that they had agreement with united arab emirates they debunk it that listen we are not the one that is imposing the fines on Nigeria or this deposit or this visa fee like this. It is your government. So how can this government continue to impoverish people? You see, most of them have, you know, this uh, United Arab Emirates uh, golden visa or their passport. 
Our money, they will do it. They will go to their country. They will buy houses. They will have their passports. But you, the poor citizen, you are restricted to go to so many countries. And for them to negotiate all these things for you, what they are doing is to lie to you. Now, the only negotiation that paved way for them, they now you know, have to use the opportunity to tax Nigerian citizens to get more money into the Federation account for them to embezzle. I'm not saying this because I personally hate Bonla Metinumbu. I'm saying this because a government cannot be relying on lies to, to need her citizens. It is so unfortunate. It is not acceptable at all. If there is no one that is seeing all these red flags about this government, it is time people should wake up. Wake up to the reality that you don't have a government. Any government who lies to the citizens is not fit to need the people. Because for you to intentionally lie to Nigerian citizens, it means that you don't mean well for them. And I'm putting it to you, you uh, Nigerian citizen. Tinubu don't mean well for you. If he mean well for you, he will not lie to you. He will not be paying subsidy and tell you that he removes subsidy and you are paying the, the money they're supposed to use to subsidize this for, and they are still withdrawing it from federation account. What are they using it for? Now, so many Nigerians uh, rejected the purchase of new presidential aircraft, not because it is not good for nation, but at this moment, we needed the money to put in another thing like healthcare education because the country is going down. But Tinubu ignored the voice of the masses. Him with Akpabio, they approved the money, they went and Tinubu bought a new aircraft. This is the situation. Right, good. Emilio Khan, he's the one who said he could do it. It's his turn. This is not the turn of President Muhammadu Buhari. We spent eight years criticizing President Muhammadu Buhari. We are tired. And I honestly don't want to even hear his name. He has messed this country up. And you, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, said, It's Emilio Khan, it's my turn. I can do it. There is a saying that leaders have forfeited the right to make any excuses. It's your turn. It's not President Muhammad Buhari that, that took away fuel subsidy flippantly. It is you. And you bear all the consequences of that, of that reckless policy. So, it is you that we will hold, we and God Almighty will hold responsible for whatever happens secondary to all your policies. It's not President Muhammad Buhari or Jonathan. You can do it. You said it's your turn. Now do it. Leaders have forfeited the right to make excuses. And the way they are going about it, they are doing nothing. Let me tell you, it is the cause, it is the, the reason is inflation. It's not because there is no food in the market. It's inflation. When this, government, when this party came in 2015, a bag of rice, 50 kilos of rice was 7,500. Yesterday I went to the market, it was 70,000. Maize, 60,000. How much is the, base, is the, is the minimum wage? 30,000. How much does a soldier in the war front earn? 50,000. How much does the police uh, recruit and uh, constable earns? About that. They cannot even buy rice. 30,000 in those who work. What is the percentage of Nigerians that work? So, Mr. President, sit up. We, this is no time for excuses. Leaders have forfeited the right to make excuses. And the way they are doing it is, oh, they are thinking of price control. They are thinking of busting warehouses. Hello, I'm old enough to have seen 14 administrations. Clearly, from that of General Yakubu Gawan to currently President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, we, in 1984, I was a young doctor, two years out of medical school. President uh, General Muhammad Buhari followed the same thing. Price control, busting warehouses. Where did it take us? They haven't learned anything in 40 years. They haven't learned anything in 40 years. Yesterday, NLC, the president of NLC, Joe Ajero, said, you can give a million naira to workers... If inflation keeps eating that up, you are not going to achieve what you are going to, what, what you need to achieve. The primary problem is the runaway inflation. The economy is out of control. The managers of our economy, they are drowning. They don't know what to do. They are the ones that cause the deterioration of the exchange rate of the Naira, the inflation we see, and the cost of food and everything in the market. It is not availability. There is food in the market. 
what I call on all the governors of this country and the president, everything should stop still. This is no time to build bridges or flyovers. This is the time to open the treasury and buy food and give food to the people and subsidize food. The only way you can crash down the price of food is bring down inflation. But these guys don't know how to do it. But flood the market with subsidized food. I lived in the United States forever. Everywhere in the world there is subsidy on food. You go to the supermarket, everything has tax. But food item does not have tax. Why? Because leaders of those countries know that hunger in any land has national security implications. But apparently, the national security team of this president and the president himself do not see the national security implications of hunger in the land. There is food in the land. The state and the federal government should open the treasury, buy food, import food, ship food into this country. There is an emergency and feed our people. Their salaries cannot pay for food, cannot pay for rent, cannot pay for school fees. People are dying in the land. They are here in Abuja buying SUVs. With our compliant National Assembly, that says nothing. We are raising our voices the moment you hear our traditional rulers. The only of if you said the same. People are suffering. Politicians know nothing about the people. They live with the people. You don't listen to that. You are here creating committees, one committee after the other. They are sitting and drinking tea while people are dying. No. Your economic policy is not working. There is hunger in the land. And there is trouble ahead. No nation will have peace if there is hunger in the land. No military, no matter how strong, no police, no matter how strong, can quell the anger of a people that are hungry in the midst of plenty. So our call to the president and all the governors should make food available, forget this price control, forget this busting warehouses, bring in food, buy food from the market and subsidize food for the people while you keep wrestling us out of this economic mess you've put us in. Okay, thank you so much uh, for that. Uh